How often do you bump into someone on the street? People are fascinatingly good at navigating a crowd. How do people go with the flow? This is the University of the Netherlands. Imagine yourself trying to catch your train at 8 in the morning. You navigate through a dense crowd of busy travelers, each of whom trying to reach their own trains. Now pause for a second and look around. You will see that everybody manages to reach their own destination. But as this happens, complex traffic patterns may arise. Now I work to understand crowd and traffic conditions like these in train stations, stadiums, museums, festivals, and so on. I ask, how do people move? How do they interact? How do people avoid each other and prevent collision? And how does the crowd, the crowd behave as a whole system? And how do we go with the flow? Now, dealing with this question is very important in order to improve the way we manage crowds, of course, for the benefit of our own safety and comfort. In this way, we can make it easier for you to reach your own destination. But let's start with the basics. The key here is to understand how people move. This doesn't mean that we are interested in every movement, every step, every choice a person makes. We might leave this to psychology. As physicists, to understand crowd dynamics, we look at how likely certain trajectories are with respect to others, and how all these trajectories combine together to give rise to a sort of a fluid. Let's say, a special complex fluid. So when we move between two points in a train station, for instance, point A and point B, certain pedestrian trajectories are more common. Others, instead, are very rare. Likewise, when you see a pedestrian in front of yourself, naturally, you would sidestep to avoid them. But also in this case, not all sidestepping movement are equally likely. Certain are more likely to be observed than others. And on and on and on, the crowd dynamics is about seeing how all these actions and reactions combine together to give rise to this special fluid. Now, this allows me to make my first point. From the perspective of a scientist, and specifically as a physicist, what does understanding even mean in the context of pedestrian crowd? Well, we know that each person can opt for a different path, slightly faster, slightly slower, more on the left, more on the right. So everybody seems unpredictable, or perhaps not. Well, actually, the only way to dissect this point is to look at lots and lots of people walking. The phenomenology of human crowd is so rich that we need hundreds of thousands of trajectory in order to explore in full its variability. And this is essential also in order to make sure that our observation or our conclusion are not just the bare outcome of chance, and we can rightfully tell what is common from what is rare. So this enables us to analyze the motion and look at so-called statistics, for instance, in a train station, again, we can identify behaviors that are frequent, those that are rare, but also typical ways around these common or rare trajectories. And finally, understanding in the context of pedestrian dynamics is about making models. This means explaining our observations and our conclusions in terms of mathematical relations. But let's proceed one step at a time. First of all, Excellent places to collect hundreds of thousands of trajectories are, of course, public locations that are trafficked every day by huge crowd. For instance, museum, festival, and, of course, train station. Well, these locations have clearly plenty of people passing through every day, providing very rich data. One of the places in which we collected data in the past was Eindhoven Central Station, and specifically at the entrance of the tunnel that leads from the bus station to the train platform. In a totally privacy-respectful way, we measure each individual trajectory for about six months on a 24-7 schedule. We did this very accurately and automatically. All in all, we acquired trajectories for about 5 million pedestrians. Well, of course, many times we observed people heading for collision. And very interesting for us were the about 9,000 cases in which we had only two people walking in opposite direction and avoiding each other. Of course, this is the ideal case to study the avoidance dynamic. Fun fact, we observed about 40 times actual bumping, actual collision. Well, as I said, the data is at the core of physical understanding. And so we shall create a mathematical model out of this. And in the next, we shall focus on the question, how do pedestrians avoid each other and do not collide all the time? Well, we will treat each person as a moving particle in our model. Let's say we will, that we will be dealing with person particles. 
Now let's take a closer look at how such a model works. Again, we will consider a very simple scenario in which we have two person particles going in opposite direction at Endoven Central Station. To model this system, we adopt a perspective based on forces. Intuitively speaking, this is not very different from how we understand much of the world around us. For instance, heavenly, heavenly bodies attract each other due to forces, gravitational force. As we all know, this is the case for Earth and Moon. Well, actually, people in most of the cases, as they go in opposite direction, they do, do not collide. So this means that we have a repulsive force between them. And actually, to remind ourselves that this is not a physical force like gravity, we should rather call it a social force. Now we want to figure out how this force is shaped and therefore explain how people avoid each other. Notice that our person particle must come with three characteristics. First, the position of the body. Second, the orientation of the body. And third, the goal or destination where the person particle wants to go. Ultimately, we would like to model and describe these forces with equation in such a way that pedestrian particles under these forces would behave as closely as possible to our experimental observation. And of course, we would like to seek the simplest possible ingredients for this. So we found in our investigation that avoidance force must have two components specifically, one at long range and one at the short range. So long range is about sight. So as soon as we, we see another pedestrian coming our way, we sidestep in order to avoid them. And so we adjust our target position for that. But not all the time we look in front. Maybe at times we are distracted. And it happens that the second pedestrian comes very close to us. And in this case, well, we immediately snap out our position in order to restore comfort distance. And this is, again, the effect of a short-range force. But this will only be theory and speculation. So where do the measurements come into play? Well, as mentioned, we would like our pedestrian particle to behave as closely as possible to our observations. Well, notably, this model, as simple as the one that I just described, is enough to reproduce many relevant behavior. Whenever the transversal distance between pedestrians is within 1.4 meters, we have indeed avoidance maneuver. And where people are headed, they don't, are headed to collision, meaning the transversal distance is zero, then in this case, they would avoid each other reaching about 75 centimeters. But actually, this simple model enables to do much more, as reproducing variation in walking velocity, or how often people bump into each other, and how distance change. Well, what I just discussed until now is just a model for avoidance of pedestrians. This is very simple. But this is exactly the way we like to do as, as physicists. We like to start very simple, and then progressively increase complexity to make sure that everything is kept under control. And by the way, a crowd is a very complex system. Now, let's fast forward a few years in the future. Well, we've worked a lot to understand and model crowd flows. That's very cool. But what to do with it? Well, actually, we don't want to limit ourselves just to the understanding of the crowd. We want to use this understanding in order to steer the motion of the crowd. Let's break it down. For instance, think about yourself in a museum. You don't really like it when all the museum visitors are in your same room clogging the space. Of course, you like when all the visitors are more or less evenly spread, because this is what maximizes everyone's comfort. So what if the museum could provide you nudges based on our understanding of the crowd, perhaps in terms of signage or changes in illumination? And this, of course, to have people spreading out. A few years back at the Light Festival in Eindhoven, we had a large crowd entering in our own exhibit. Well, it was just like entering in a sort of a museum. There, we explored ways to nudge the flow. Actually, in our exhibit, visitors faced a frontal obstacle, and they had a question, should I go left or should I go right? Now, our setup could present nudges in terms of displaying signage or light. In particular, we had, for instance, a left and a right arrows. This is possibly the simplest way to direct people. And indeed, we managed to change what, what was a 50-50 ratio between people going left and going right to something close to 40-60. But surely there are even less intrusive ways. So what about light or sound? Well, this kind of experiment are very valuable to acquire knowledge about how to successfully steer crowds. 
Well, keep in mind, we are still at the research level, but this is where we are going. So let's go back to the question we started with. How do people go with the flow? First, it's actually very surprising that we can use the language of mathematics to deal with this question. Everybody comes with a different agenda and performs different action. Yet, there are universal aspects to this system that we can encode in the mathematical language and even make quantitative predictions. For instance, we saw that we can study the motion of people as that of pedestrian particles changing special social forces. Understanding how crowd flow, but also what influence this flow is very important for our society, and this is essential to build the smart pedestrian environment of the future. Thank you for listening.